Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your tool libraries so that you have a nice inventory of tools for all your cutting operations. If you set this up once, you'll have them forever. A lot of us use the same tools over and over again. So if we take the time to build our own libraries and set up the tools properly, it will save us a lot of time down the future. So I'm under the Manufacturer tab here. If you're not there, navigate to it now. And we're going to go across to our Tool Library button here. So I'm going to click that. And this window is going to pop up. It might just be blank or it might come in with a bunch of tools. The very first thing we're going to do is go on the left hand side here. We're going to go to our local library. And this is where we're going to create our own personal library. So I'm going to right click and go new library. And I'm just going to create my own library. So that will be saved there. And whenever we build a tool in here, we'll have it forever. So to start adding tools, there are two ways to do it. You can build from scratch by clicking this plus button up here and you get all kinds of options and you can work through all the prompts and set them up. Typically what I like to do is go under the Fusion Library drop down here. I will go and actually select a tool that's pretty close to what I want to build anyway and then I will work backwards off that. So I'm going to go down to Milling Tools in Inch and I'm going to pick a tool that possibly I use all the time. For us, we do a lot of work with uh, half inch roughing end mills and quarter inch flat end mills. So I'm gonna pick a quarter inch flat end mill here. So if I click this, you can see that this tool, because it's in the Fusion Library, it's got all these parameters and data already loaded into it. And now to copy it over into my personal library, because remember we're in the Fusion Library right now, I'm going to right click it. I'm gonna click Copy Tool. Then I'm gonna navigate back to my own personal tool library here. And then in this window, I'm just going to right click in the dead space. I'm going to paste that tool. So now we've copied this Fusion tool over into our own library. So now we're going to go into it and start making some changes to better suit our application. So I'm going to right click on the tool. I'm going to go edit tool. And the window that pops up, it's going to give me all the options involved with changing out how this tool looks and performs. The first window under this general tab, we just have some sort of general information, a description, a vendor, product IDs. If you're using the same tools over and over again, and if they're kind of specific, you might want to enter in the vendor and product ID just so you can find them again when you need to replace them. And then the, and then the description, also sort of important. If you have different types, like two flutes, three flutes, we might just go and name these accordingly. And then once we're happy with that information, we'll move on to our next tab, which is going to be the cutter data. So under here, we have all the relevant physical data of the tool. Starting from the top, we have the type of end mill and there's a drop down here with a bunch of options. Since we've selected specifically a flat end mill, we're gonna leave it at that. You have the unit in which it's measured, uh, direction of rotation, the number of flutes, and even the material the tool is made of if you wanna enter that, and then all the physical data of the tool. So this will be the various geometries. If I click through here, I'm gonna start with a diameter. We're gonna see a little representation of the dimension that we're modifying pop up down here. It just kind of helps you keep track of what dimensions you're changing. But we can go all the way through and change the diameter of the cutter, diameter of the shaft, overall length of the tool, the length below holder, shoulder length, and flute length. So the reason all this dimensional data is relevant is that it is going to use that information when it's performing simulations on your cuts to detect any conflicts between the cutting operation you're requesting and your tool and holder setup as you are using. So it is worth taking the time to set these up, set them up right. It's also worth noting that your length below holder dimension may change when you change a tool if you're using a collet system. So if you are using collets when you're changing out your tools, it's important to make sure that you can be consistent in your length below holder dimension because that's the only one that's really gonna change. If you're using something different, it shouldn't be a problem, but just keep that in mind. And then over on the right hand side here, we have a grid with our representation of the tool. So this whole assembly is what you're gonna see floating around in your simulations, and it's going to be used to detect those crashes in your cutting operations. So it's important that the tool is represented and the holder itself this tool down here, you can see if we go and change any of these dimensions, I'm gonna change the length below holder. So I'm gonna change it to 1.5 and click enter. And we're gonna see that representation over here change. And it's going to do that for any of the dimensions you enter. So after we're happy with our tool dimensions, we're gonna take a look at our holder assembly here. So this guy in blue, to change that, we're gonna to go to the holder tab up here. 
And you can see this tool has just come in with a very specific tool holder. If this closely represents what you're using, it doesn't need to be exact, but if it's close enough, then you can just continue to use it. If it does not look like what you're using, if you're using something narrower, you're gonna to wanna to change that representation so you get more accurate simulations and possibly you can even run your cuts a little closer if your tool holder isn't this bulky. So you have a list on the side here with a bunch of options and you can click through those and browse the various tool holders that are built into this library. For us, we're using a spindle with an ER20 collet system and I find this guy right down under holders an inch and right at the bottom, this BT40 B4C3 0020, that's a big mouthful, but this guy looks very close to the end of our spindle and this dimension down here pretty closely matches our collet nut. So this is the one I typically use for my tool holders. And once you find something you like, we can move on to the next tab, which is going to be the cutting data. So because we imported a tool from the Fusion 360 library, it came in with all these cutting presets on the left hand side here. So that's a bunch of presets for different materials and different operations. And in the middle panel here, we have all the data specific to each one of those operations. So if I click aluminum roughing, for example, I have all these different settings already preloaded. The reason I like bringing in tools with these presets is all these numbers give me something to work off of when I'm making adjustments specific to my operation and machine. It's just a nice starting point. You will probably have to change a lot of these numbers depending on your setup and your use. But as you do that, it will save it forever into the preset. So anytime we're using that tool for that specific material and that operation, we know that these numbers are going to be set up correctly. So it's worth using these as a baseline and then tweaking them accordingly, saving those changes, and you're good for all future operations. So under this preset, we're just gonna go through some of the entry fields here. So going from the top down, we have our spindle speed. And this is pretty obvious, but this is going to be the spindle speed it is using during the cut. And then below that, we have our surface speed, which is gonna be the surface speed of the tool face. And it is a function of RPM and tool diameter. Obviously a larger tool diameter is going to have a higher surface speed when spinning at the same RPM as a tool with a smaller diameter. Next, we have our ramp spindle speed. This is the spindle speed it is going to use when it's performing a ramp operation, which is an entry strategy it uses while performing certain cuts. Next, we move into some of our feed rates. We have our cutting feed rate, which is just the standard cutting feed rate. We have our feed per tooth, which is a function of the feed rate, spindle speed, and number of flutes on the tool. We have our lead in and lead out feed rate. And these are the feed rates it's gonna use when it is approaching and exiting a cut. And then we have our ramp feed rate, which similar to our ramp spindle speed, is just gonna be the feed rate it uses when it's performing a ramp operation. Next, we have our vertical feed rates. Our plunge feed rate is going to be how quickly that tool descends into the cut in a vertical move. And below that, we have our plunge feed rate per revolution. Next, we have our passes and linking. So this area is quite important in the presets. You are gonna be able to determine the maximum vertical travel and step over this tool in this operation is ever gonna use. So the system knows that when you're performing different types of cuts, there's a limitation on the step down or step over that you wanna use for the tool. So it will preload those into the tool pass regardless of what you're using, and it will be specific to the tool and the cutting operation. Below that we have coolant, and we have a few options under here. If your controller is capable of commanding a coolant flow or an air blower, this is where you're gonna find that selection and it will come on when the tool is in an active cutting operation. So as you're adjusting all these specifics, it is important to do it in here where you can save that data into your preset, then it's ready to go for the next cut. If you want to add a whole new preset to this cutting data, you can do that up here by clicking the plus sign and going add preset. You can enter in whatever preset you want. Maybe I'm milling solid wood in a roughing strategy. Then I can build a whole new preset with all this specific data for that new operation. So the last tab is gonna be the post processor where you can enter some further information like your tool number. This number is important because it's going to help your controller identify which tool it is using. It needs to be unique to each individual tool so it can recognize when there has been a tool change. If you had two different tools under the same tool number, there may be a conflict and it does not know to probe that tool to check for the new height because it assumes it's the same tool you were already using. So next we have the length offset and the diameter offset. 
So these we're going to want to leave at zero. By leaving them at zero, it is going to use the dimensions we entered back under the cutter data, and it's not going to modify those in any way. So, so long as you've entered that data correctly, just leave these two at zero. Below that, we have our turret number. So this is going to be where that tool is loaded into a turret in an automatic tool change operation. So again, critical to enter that information accurately if you're using an automatic tool changer. If not, just leave it at zero. And then down here is where you're gonna tell it whether you are using a manual tool change or an automatic tool change. And then the last is just the live tool. So this is a spinning tool, therefore it's live. If it wasn't live, such in a lathe application where the tool is static, you'd leave that unchecked. So that's sort of the bulk of that information. Once we're done with all that, I'm gonna put a number in here and just call it tool number three. And then I'm going to save all this information by simply clicking accept. And that's going to close. And now all our parameters are properly set up for that tool. If I go back to my library, you can see it here. It's labeled as tool number three, this quarter inch end mill. So that's good to start using. Thanks again for watching. I will continue to upload more videos on how to use the Fusion 360 CAM software. And happy milling.